Oh, my mercy. <clears throat> well, in theory, we should be live on Facebook. I've muted everyone on here just to get us started. It's a mess. <laughs> Yay, technology. Okay. We still got a couple of minutes. We'll let people get on. Know that when it's your turn to talk, uh, you'll just need to unmute yourself, I think. Hello. You are here. Can you hear me, Betty? Uh, just working with technology. Let's see. Morning, John. Can you hear us? I've lost everybody, so I can see everybody's on, but your web camera is off, it's saying. There you are. Great. <sighs> this, this makes my stress and anxiety just go through the roof. It's wonderful. All right, well, we are live, supposedly. It looks like we are online. Uh, I'm gonna be working behind the scenes, uh, trying to make sure that everybody who is sharing is front and center for us uh, as we go through the service today. Um, and so I'm gonna try to keep everybody muted. Uh, when it's your turn to talk, make sure you unmute yourself. Um, and then if you can, go back and, and re-mute yourself for uh, the service. And of course, when we have times of sharing collectively, uh, we'll ask everyone to uh, please help us out uh, and unmute and mute accordingly so we don't get a lot of the extra background noise. So with uh, all that in place, Sarah is going to open us, uh, open us up this morning as we begin. Sarah?
think it's me next. Um, my uh, symbol for laying the altar was uh, headphones, uh, headpieces, uh, mouthpieces, like everything that has now become a necessity for, for doing life and functioning in this space. And so uh, when, when we entered into this season, and don't shake your head at me, Megan, uh, when we entered into this season and uh, Zoom became a part of our regular vernacular, um, which stinks, uh, I had to find the right way to communicate and to hear uh, and to be heard. And uh, I tried three, four, five different sets of headphones, uh, some that worked really well for me to be able to hear what was going on, uh, others that made it really difficult for me to hear, but they could hear me well, uh, some that had microphones that picked up everything that happened on my side. So a stomach gurgle sounded like a blue whale coming up out of the ocean. Um, and so finding that place of recognizing, like I just had to find the right atmosphere and the right tools and the right resources uh, for me to, to listen well uh, and to be heard well and to operate in this space. Uh, and that's that's been so much beyond just, just the microphones, but finding that in uh, my spiritual rhythms to, to understand that, um, that this is a space that's gonna take a lot of experimenting to find what works. Uh, even this morning, you know, we're, we're on early this morning on this call, just tinkering and playing and making sure that, that we can function. Um, and, and the grace that's coming in that space of being okay when it doesn't work, when the unexpected uh, appears, when technology tends to fail, uh, when the news set of news or regulations or whatever uh, comes our way. To, to recognize that it just becomes this emotional wave that's hitting us of new information and processing. And, uh, and we have to sit in that. And uh, the more that we sit, uh, the more that we allow ourselves to be grounded in our faith allows us to be able to, uh, to for our faith to rise to meet that storm uh, and for, not, for us to not balk in that space. So the headphones and the microphones uh, were, were the altarpiece that I laid for this season.
heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, you want to get... Um, your communion elements, if you were like me and you forgot them and had to run off screen to go get them, go ahead and grab them now uh, as we're heading into the season of communion and the celebration uh, of the Lord's Supper. So um, I want to share uh, just Ebenezer and coming into Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is my all-time favorite holiday, hands down. Uh, I love Thanksgiving. Uh, I love the spirit of it. I love the fact that uh, it is the least commercialized of any holiday that we have uh, in, in America that carries uh, that that you know the meaning of gathering uh, with those that you love, um, and yet this this year it comes with uh, kind of a bittersweetness. Uh, it's a little tumultuous. Things are certainly um, uncertain in this space, um, and so I've been thinking a lot about the meaning of great gratitude and thankfulness. I've been keeping uh, the, the calendar that Susie gave us at the beginning of the month of recording um, daily things that I have to be thankful for and that I'm recognizing. Um, and so we, we say we're thankful, um, but the question is, do, do we mean it? And how do we show our thankfulness? Uh, and so I went back, I was reading, I've been reading from Luke 17 uh, this last week, and there's a story in there where Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem and he travels along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Uh, Samaria is, is the place that was the home of uh, the Samaritans who believed that was the holy city of God. Uh, and they were 
uh, they carried a lot of the the beliefs of, of Judaism in Galilee being an outskirt uh, city of the community of Jerusalem. Uh, and so he was going through the village and 10 men who had leprosy met him and they stood at a distance and they called out in a loud voice saying, Jesus, master rabbi, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he came back, praising God in a loud voice. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. <laughs> Jesus asked, we're not all 10 cleansed. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go for your faith has made you well. Like I said, I've been thinking a lot about joy and gratitude. I've even been reading a couple of books on uh, gratitude and particularly the science of joy and gratitude. And in one of the books, it talks about there's, there's a difference and our body knows it. Uh, the difference between spouting off things that make us happy and the things that truly make us grateful. So we can, we, we, we are, even our body can't be tricked. Like we can say, oh, I like this. Oh, I'm so happy for this. Oh, I'm so thankful for this. Um, but our body, our chemistry internally, like it knows the difference from things that truly we're truly grateful for and things we're just kind of like, yeah, that makes me happy. That make, makes my day. This gives me warm fuzzies, whatever. Like our body knows that. And so, uh, and it says it registers with the chemicals that it releases, the way that we feel in that space, uh, it matters. And so there's a difference between just spouting off things or practices that make us happy and that true mindset of being grateful. And so I stumbled across a, an article by Cindy Keating that she says, here are 10 things that grateful people don't do. Grateful people don't compare their journeys to anyone else. Uh, and this is a hard one because we are in a culture of comparison, but people who are truly grateful recognize that we are all on our own individual separate trajectory and the experiences that we're having and the things that are pressing in against us, they're unique to us. Uh, and they carry their own story uh, and their own. So we don't compare. We don't, oh, they're so lucky or, or even, or they're so uh, misfortunate, you know, that, that we don't do make the comparisons. Two, people who practice gratitude don't need to feel happy in order to be happy. Happiness is not just an emotional expression for them. It's, it's a state of mind. It's a way of, of being intentional with your thoughts and your actions and the way that you go through life and see things. Three, she says, they don't run from their imperfections. They embrace the fact that they're not perfect, that they have shortfalls, shortcomings in life, uh, and that they have ways to better themselves and to improve. Four, People who practice gratitude don't ignore rest. Uh, they, they may run busy. They're usually incredibly uh, generous with their space and their time, um, but they also make sure that they take time for themselves. They take time away, uh, recognizing that they, they uh, are, are worth getting uh, some of that health and that restoration that they themselves are wanting to hope and bless others with. Five, they don't forget the importance of relationships. People who practice gratitude have deep connections and deep friendships that they keep close to them and that they make sure that they, uh, they, are, they steward and they take care of. People who practice gratitude don't allow, uh, they don't allow time to control them. Uh, they recognize that uh, they, they're only given so much time in a day and that they have certain commitments to that, but they always make sure that their commitment is to finding time and space uh, for the things that they know help to restore them, help to give thanks, help give thanks to others. Seven, people who practice gratitude uh, don't overlook the value in everyday people. They recognize that each person that they pass, uh, whether they have never met them before, maybe they're just meeting them in that moment, or maybe it's somebody that they, they know throughout a longer season, uh, they recognize the importance of being able to be present with others uh, and to build on the relationships as they see them and not as hindrances or, uh, or interruptions to their day. People who practice gratitude don't set pace to the rhythm of rush. Uh, they're not so busy that they can't see what's going on around them. Uh, they're able to take those moments uh, again and be present uh, and to not be pushed into other expectations or expectations beyond themselves that stretch them thin. People who practice gratitude don't give into the pressure to have, to be, or to do it all. Again, they share life, they share 
uh, commitments, they share obligations, um, because it's in that, again, those shared relationships and those shared experiences that make those opportunities that much better. And finally, people who practice gratitude, they don't take life for granted. Uh, even when the storms arise, they recognize that this is an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to see something in the world that they hadn't seen before as they're pressed a little bit. As we come into Thanksgiving, as we sit around the table with family and friends, as we look for a chance to rest with those that we love, as we spend time maybe apart, uh, as, as our family will, our family won't be gathering uh, with my Missouri family uh, this year, it'll be, dif it'll be different, it'll be difficult. But the reality is, is this season, Thanksgiving, uh, and these practices of gratitude show us a lot of the way that Jesus practiced the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper in the, in the scriptures is called the Eucharist, is a Greek word which literally, literally means to give thanks or thanksgiving. The depictions we have in scripture of the Last Supper represent these, at, these elements of being grateful in our life for Christ, for the disciples, for the shared life and the experiences they had. And so as we come into today's Eucharist celebration to the Lord's Supper, to communion, we come recognizing we're not perfect, recognizing that happiness is something beyond what we feel as we get to that place of contentment. We recognize that others around us have imperfections as they're walking through this journey together, that relationships are essential to the way we're going and that we can't control them, and that we have to pause and be present in the moment to break bread, to share in wine and conversation and laughter, and to remember life. So gather your elements, and remember that the Lord's Supper is the Thanksgiving Supper. And as we celebrate Thanksgiving this year, may we remember the words that Christ gave us. These are the words from Paul as he led in this celebration. For I have received from the Lord what I have delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks to it, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. This you should do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, the supper, and he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink of this bread, drink of this cup and eat of this bread, you proclaim the Lord's death until he returns again. John's going to share in song. Every blessing fill my heart to sing thy praise. Sings of mercy ever ceasing. The loudest praise. Teach me the song about your song. Flame in tongues above. Raise my heart up. It's the honor, Daily I'm constrained to be And I hope that thy good measure Did I have wandering heart to thee Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it 
known to need the God Place thy heart, I fix upon it Take it for thy thoughts of Wonder, Lord, I feel it Come to see the God I love. Lord, you know, take and see it. To my brother, God wants a love. Lord, a very blessing in my heart to see thy grace. Lord, a mercy. Love ceasing, thousands of lovers grace. Teach me some melodious sonnet from my claiming tongues of love. I'm time fixed upon my dream. Fixed upon it, God of God's redeeming love. Thanks, John. I want to share just a few ministry opportunities of things that are going on and then sharing the benediction. Uh, know that you can stay on after the benediction. We're going to have a time of sharing of praises and petitions uh, and connecting with one another. Uh, so please, uh, after... After the benediction, I will turn off Facebook Live, um, but please stay on the video conference if you want to, to share any praise and petitions or just to connect with one another. Uh, some ministry opportunities that are coming up. Again, uh, we're back online. Uh, this will be the format through at least the end of the year um, and more than likely longer beyond that, but um, we've at least scheduled it through the end of the year. Uh, that also means our Christmas Eve service will be virtual. Uh, and Jennifer is helping to work on getting something uh, pulled together for that. And so uh, if you are interested in helping, she's looking for some participants to either uh, submit photos of themselves dressed up in various nativity character scenes uh, or for folks to share in musical numbers. And those can be recorded uh, or you can share those live uh, that night as we come together. But contact Jennifer uh, if you're interested in helping by December 11th so that she can make sure that she has all the pieces for that. Uh, there will be a small group that will be sharing uh, with the Boys and Girls Club tomorrow uh, for, thanks, for Thanksgiving meal. Uh, and they'll even get to hear a recorded version of Little Ants by their request. I thought this was going to be my year off away from it, but uh, Megan said they, they couldn't have Thanksgiving without it. So uh, we're going to see if we can make that happen. Uh, also, we're collecting uh, donations for the shopping for the Boys and Girls Club families. Uh, again, it... it Seems like it shouldn't be stated, but it absolutely is stated. This year has been rough, particularly for some of those families. Uh, and so any donations that can be made to help with shopping, shopping will look different this year. You guys are going to want to make sure that folks are safe. We don't exactly know how we're going to do that, um, but we are we are exploring those options, and we'll certainly share those as we get them. Uh, but you can begin to donate uh, any amount to go towards helping those families as they shop for their families for Christmas. Um, Family Promise is hosting we host on December 20th, which, again, I think is a phenomenal time for us to host, that we get to host uh, those families over Christmas week. Uh, what a what a very cool opportunity for us to pour in. We'll have in that space, but probably uh, coming the second week of December, we'll start sharing that information and we'll be looking for folks who are willing to commit to uh, preparing meals and getting those delivered to the hotel rooms and the places those families are staying uh, during that week. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, someone who's donated within the church, has donated some money uh, for folks to bless, um, bless your family or to bless those uh, around you who know they could just use it this season. And so I have, uh, I have gift cards at $25 value. Uh, if you know that there's somebody who could use just a blessing in some way. It would help them out tremendously, uh, physically, mentally, uh, emotionally, financially. Uh, please get a hold of me. Uh, we're glad to give those gifts out. Um, 
until until they're gone. And so if we get a chance to hear back how that money was used to bless somebody, we'd love to hear that, just general details. Um, but it's not necessary. We don't need receipts back. Uh, we just want to know that we want to make sure that people are being taken care of. And we're so uh, thankful that we got people in the faith family who have who've seen that and recognize that and want to provide a way for us, for you, uh, for us as a church to be mobilized and empowered to go out there and just be the hands and feet of Christ uh, in our circles. Um, I felt like there was something else I'm missing. Um, board, am I missing anything else? Um Please continue to, to support the church financially. Uh, you can donate through the websites, get those gifts in. Uh, we will be looking at switching over our donation uh, abilities. The, the way that we were using it started charging uh, larger fees. And so we're going to go back to a, a cheaper option for us. Uh, but we're going to wait and do that after the new year, um, just to not have a whole lot of disruption right now during the holiday season. Um, but please continue to offer your ties and donations that way. Uh, again, you can mail them in as well. Uh, just to help make sure that we're uh, supporting uh, the ministries, supporting me and my family uh, in the work that we're doing. Um, I think that's it. Let me give you a blessing again. Uh, I'll close the, the Facebook live feed uh, at the close of this, and then we'll jump online and join and sharing uh, praise and petitions and just catching up with one another. Let me give you a blessing. May we come into this week finding the ways to be thankful, finding ways uh, to find uh, the, the silver lining in some dark places. May we be able to be a source of encouragement, a source of hope, a source of, a source of light for not only those in our own family, um, but those in the circles that are around us and the places that we go. May we be able to practice gratitude and may our hope uh, that radiates from the gratitude that we find help to share some inspiration in their life. And in that, may they see, may they see Christ. Uh, be with us as we celebrate. God, keep, uh, keep us safe, keep us healthy uh, as we go and celebrate in this space. We pray these things.